Hi, good afternoon. In this um, late afternoon, I was meant to start earlier, but uh, yeah, again, falling asleep on the sofa. But you know what they say, better late than never. So allow me to introduce myself as your host, your guy, the one and only himself, DLG Repping. Now, um, you might have seen me or not, yeah? Put this out on the bus, yeah? You might have, you might have seen um, these sitting on the seats on the buses. Yeah, this is what I do. So, um, if you pick up one of these, yeah, type the, type the name itself. Type my name, my YouTube name itself. That's DLG Repping. And the subscribe button's at the bottom, yeah? So, remember who I am. That's me. Or you can call me DLG, short for DLG Repping. I don't mind. Anyway, so um, I'm bringing you my DLG Repping's daily transfer news. And um, we must start on this um, controversial guy in the name of Mazat Ozil. Now, according to some reports somewhere, he leaving the club will cost Arsenal a staggering seven point two million pounds in wages. William, who has been dog foul, cost will cost us thirty million pounds in wages. What on earth is this football club doing? That I don't know. And well, with Ozil, I'll blame that idiot Gazidis for Ozil having being paid 350000 a week. Now, there's reports that Mr. Ozil himself will be off to Fenerbahce. And, um, Coming off the topic, um, coming off the subject um, for a minute, Tottenham Hotspur are four nil up away to Marine. So basically, they have done the job in it's inside forty minutes. So they've put their their place in round four. Let's see when they get a proper team. What happens anyway? So um, with Mirza Özil, this guy has been inconsistently. Poor on the pitch, and it's going to come to a bitter end. And he's only got himself to blame, you know. He don't go publicly talking about political issues, not to do with Arsenal or football, and um, causing offence. And that's what he's done on the pitch. He has been in the last five, six years woeful. Last season. I was privileged to watch him perform well in a 4-0 win against Newcastle in the league. But all the more so, there was always inconsistent performances coming from him. Not enough um, end product, not enough ugh, creme de la creme. He didn't get, we didn't get that um, Ozil that we saw at Real Madrid. The Ozil that assisted the Benzimas and Cristiano Ronaldo's. We didn't get that Ozil. We never really got that Ozil. Let's be real. He's been a flop. Fact. He's been a flop. I'm going to speak the truth here. So I'll be glad to see the back of him. Anyway, moving on from Ozil. Um, excuse me, Mark. Do bear with me. Um, lost more. Yeah. Um, another player that um, who could be on his way out if he sees his contract out, and this will pee me off to the back teeth. This is um, following Balogun. Now he's been heavily linked with Liverpool. 
that I do know through some sources. I can't tell you exactly who it is, but he has been heavily linked with Liverpool. And um, it's only going to be a Serge Gnabry all over again. You know? We will regret it in years to come, and then we'll realise that we really like him and we want him back. Well, we ain't getting Gnabry back. Not the way Bayern Munich are continuing to show ambition in the domestic league as well as uh, in Europe. And Liverpool are heading the same way. They're showing that if he goes up, ends up in Liverpool, they will only get stronger domestically and in Europe. And if Arsenal show a lack of ambition with, with, with the current situation with the owner and the board of directors, we're not going nowhere but downwards. And that's the truth. Let's be real. The reality is we're just um, we just continue to make the same mistakes and following Balogun could be a big mistake. For me, if you get one of, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get rid of um, one or two of the young academy graduates, then it has to be Eddie and Ketia. I'd rather get shot of Eddie Nketia to West Ham and keep following Balogun. Get rid of Nketia and give all of his wages to following Balogun and give him a good deal, three or four year deal. In fact, a long term deal. We want to build up, I want to see Arsenal build up this striker as high and as much as possible. Turn him into a great. Just make him great for the foreseeable future, especially in the conversation of long term for me I want to see him do well he's a he's a goal scorer he takes his opportunities when he's in, especially when he's in the box he's not messing about playing games he's scoring goals and that's what we need Aubameyang won't be around forever neither would Lacazette this guy is the long term solution and what we need to do in that sense is get another striker you know, for the long term. Odson of Celtic is available. Now, um, I'm going to talk about, about Odson because, well, I can't talk well too much about him because I haven't watched him really play. But I know that um, he's a striker that um, comes with um, a healthy reputation of goal scoring. I hear that he may have assists, but I hear that he holds the ball up well. And... Um, his movement is um, excellent in the box. So, who knows? I hope Kieran Tierney can come out and um, speak um, about Odson and tell us Edward, Edward Odson and tell us how really good he can become. So, enough about him. And I'm going to talk about Julian Brandt now. This has been kept quiet for the day, but I think his name will come up again. He's... Everly linked with Arsenal. Borussia Dortmund has um, quoted a price tag of 22 to 24 million pounds. I wonder how much that will be in his wages as well. And what we're going to be paying him over the course of the contract. Nothing's been um, concrete. Um, Pat Sandaka, who plays for um, Red Bull Salzburg in Hungary. Now... I don't know how much work the scouts have done. And I don't want us to go and purchase this striker and finding out, yeah, that we've done little research on him and he's been bought just for the sake of it. For me, we need to do some serious research on him and um, the scouts have got to do some real serious research. Watch him over... A period of five to seven, eight games. And then, you know, arrange a meeting with the management to see, for the management to see how good he can really become. For me, I don't know too much about him. I can't tell you his strengths to his weaknesses. So, this is a striker that um, <clears throat> he's been fought off by Arsenal. And that's as far as I know. Um, Yves Bazuma. Now, I know that 
uh, Mikel Arteta really likes him. And um, he would love to um, purchase um, this guy in the January transfer window. As long as he gets a number 10, that's the main priority. Yves Bazuma comes across as a number 8, maybe slash 4. Very um, talented footballer. Definitely full of ability. Strength in the midfield is there. And I'll tell you what, him and Partey will go hand in hand together. I'll tell you that now. In that 4 2 3 1, and you, in, and you have Partey alongside Yves Bazuma, you can only imagine what difference it would make to our team. I mean, the difference it will make to our team. I feel that um, that um, Arteta will try and um, make a bid, or maybe Arsenal will make a bid with Arteta's blessing for the player in the summer. I doubt if this will happen in January, because Brighton are yeah they're fighting to survive, and um, they would like to keep Bazuma to. I feel that they would like to keep Bazuma to the summer. That's what I feel. So, Yves Bazuma, not really. Um, Emi Brendia, now, out of the number of teams I can think of, I think he's possibly the more likely to join Arsenal. If the reports are true, then he's obviously made it clear to Norwich City that he would like to go to Arsenal and he's prepared to force a move to Arsenal. Despite Norwich coming out publicly and stating that he is not for sale. Well, Mendia, well, if Mendia has said um, that he's um, he's prepared to um, force the move to Arsenal this summer, then well, that is um, a big um, issue in Norwich City Football Club history, and um, that will go well. That could possibly go to the wire in in our favour or against us. So only time will tell. Um, <clears throat> a player that I would I, I would like to see a right back at the club, and um, I think I'm going to go. I would like to talk about Max Aarons I hope we can persuade him to be an Arsenal player now he's a guy who's on the contract just like Emi Brendia I would like to see I would like to think that um, that there's a way that we, we we could bid for him I know we've taken out a loan because of this um, COVID-19 situation and I doubt if that was the right thing for us to do. I really doubt it. Because I don't see uh, w w why we would want to take out 120 million. But um, if we are to get Max Aaron's, then this is a purchase that um, Stan Kroenke would need to help the management out with. Um, he's more... A fan, well, he's, he's more what the fans want than what Mikel Arteta wants, if that makes any sense. If Mikel Arteta um, makes it public that he likes him and he would love to see him, love to see him work under him, then there is a realistic possibility that we can purchase uh, Max Aaron's or Brighton's Lapperty in the summer. That would um, really excite me. One or the two. And with Hector Bellerin, he's had a couple of good performances, but yet again, I keep reiterating that he is just not good enough based on his consistency. And I think he's not been good enough overall in the last four or five seasons. And for me, if a club, yeah, matches um, the um, price tag, of his valuation, then I think we should get a shot of him and we can bring in a Lapati and use that money to bring in um, a Max Aaron's. Forgotten his name so quickly. 
However, um, come the summer, I think it's going to be the same situation where we're going to have to get shot off certain players to bring in better players. And I think the outs for the summer will be a lot busier. The list of names that we're going to see out of the door in our outs will be extremely interesting. The most interesting point for me will be the ins. What, who we bring in and what position that needs strengthening. That's um, the key. This month, it's going to be really difficult to get players in. We, we may get one, if two, if that. But Arsenal, for me, for the from the impression I get is, I feel that they are really active in this January transfer window. And I would like to see some players in. I would like to see some players go, maybe two or three, but the ins and out, one or two. Arsenal fans, um, if you like to come onto this channel, you're more than welcome. It don't matter, don't matter where you're from, what race you are, gender, culture, religion, you're more than welcome. Um, if you can come up with, um, if you could sign the one, if you could sign one player in this January, if it's one player that we can sign in this January transfer window, who would it be? And why? Leave it in the comment section below. Um, do um, remember to smash the thumbs up like button. And please help me to subscribe to my channel. That's myself and I only. DLG Repping. Yes, you've heard it from me. DLG Repping. Dele London Guna. Otherwise spelt Repping as Romeo Echo Papa Papa Indigo November. You know what time it is, yeah? Otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up and say, ladies to the gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching and putting up with me as you always do. I'll be back um, hopefully later on if I don't feel tired. If I don't do another video, then you know I'm in bed. <laughs> Otherwise, um, have a good day. Enjoy your... Um, evening as it is here or whether you're up in the morning or up in the evening around the world enjoy yourselves and do um smash the thumbs up like button leave your personal views your opinions in my comment section below and the main thing is help me to subscribe to my channel by smashing that subscribe button left right and center galore and abundantly with a lot of passion Thank you once again, and um, hopefully I'll be back home later on. See you later, guys. Be nice, please.